about a week ago, yeah, roughly about a week ago, I don't know, maybe a little bit longer than that, um, I asked you, what are things you love about comics? Uh, I, I, I listed some things I love about comics, and it kind of changes every day. I always think of new things I love about comics. But I asked for you, what do you love about comics? And you gave me some great responses. So I'm going to read through them, and, and we're going to talk about that. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, consider this like a, um, it's, it's, it's like super chats, only you don't have to pay anything. Uh, you just make a comment and I'm, I'm, I want to read it and talk about it. So that's awesome. I, I do this more often because the comments are way more intelligent than uh, my videos most time. But I want to go through your comments. Like I said, I talked about what I loved about comics. Now let's talk about what you love about comics and, and kind of comment on it a little bit. Um, Rod Palmer uh, notes that uh, from him, it's about escapism, art, the characters, and the feeling of actually knowing them, collecting and just enjoying the hobby, looking online, comicsology for books, watching YouTube, etc. And uh, GZAM Band wrote, uh, same for me, there's some very wacky stuff out there. I think this is great. Yeah, absolutely. The escapism factor is something that you can't deny. And I think these these amazing fantasy stories it, it get you thinking long after you put the comic down and you can kind of imagine where the worlds go and everything else. That's what's really wonderful about comics is that there's no limit to what you can imagine and, and where it can all go and be and and it's 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 so there's very few mediums that have so much out there that just allows your imagination to go so far everywhere um it's 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 credit it's incredible so i i just i love um uh, i love that about comics too i'm right there with you brother uh dc says um what I love most about comics is that it is limited by only the creator's imagination anytime, anywhere, any series possible without limits. And it's kind of like the last comment. Totally agree. I think that's, and it's, it's one reason why you kind of cringe when, when comics do these very kind of, Hey, here's some people in the kitchen for 12 pages. It's like, ah, you, you have the entire universe to play with. And we're, we're, you know, we're, we're doing half a comic of, you know, wonder woman getting coffee. It's like, I mean, I hope some some good dialogue, some things going on to spark that imagination. But I, I think, where else can you go everywhere? And comics do not get the respect they deserve for for being able to do everything and anything. Uh, B. Brown, I, I suspect I know what he's going to say here. He said, "My one through four are Cyber Frog, and my fifth is Perch." Well, thank you very much, B. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute. I I, uh, I I love that about you. I love that you stick with Cypher. I can't tell completely if this is a bit or or this is really what you, you you're you're very behind Cyberfrog, which is cool. I'm glad you found something you loved. Uh, honestly, it's it's all good. Um, but I, I always suspect that it's a bit. But I may be wrong. One day I'll have to get you on a show and chat it out. Um, Gzam Band writes again. Uh, American superhero comics, the modern world's deepest and longest standing collective or sorry collaborative storytelling project. It spans multiple generations even. To me, that is akin to what we find everywhere else in human history, such as Greek myths, Sumeric myths, and very archaic stories found in shamanic cultures. Uh, these stories already pass on our best ideas to our descendants. The American superhero genre reverberates some very archaic mythic patterns. An issue or ordeal, death and rebirth as a liminal figure with magical power. The fact that this is embedded in a throwaway form of lowbrow art entertainment is amazing to me. It means the stories survive and evolve largely uncorrupted by malicious governmental agencies. Um, and, and then he goes on, but, but pausing through here, um, man, I can't agree with you more. I would love to you you. I would love to have a beer with you. Um, I, I think this is incredible. I, I I love myths and storytelling and everything that goes about them. And and the power of what we're doing with comics is you know. And this is where I I I, I get frustrated at people who who throw that when you can see a writer kind of phoning it in. Uh, to a comic, it's like your comic, if you do it right, can last thousands of years. Um, I mean, we uh, uh, five hundred years from now, Watchmen will be something people will read, for better or worse. It will be a lot of these comics. Well, can you imagine your 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 great 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 grandchildren uh, being able to pick this stuff up and just not only can you get experience everything you did, but you know, 200 years more of it. I mean, Jesus, it's incredible uh, what's there. Anyway, he goes on to say, as for what I love about comics in general is that they're so easy to produce relative other forms, allows them to contain the wildest products of imagination. There's almost nothing stopping anyone from producing whatever story to think of. 
man, God bless you. I totally agree. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it goes on to how to protect it. Um, there's a couple of responses. Jorge Cleo said, yes and no, specifically rather than comics and politics created for you. He's talking more about more of the, uh, the solutions uh, to it. But uh, first name, last name uh, writes uh, a lot more about kind of the mythic role of Cape Comics and, and how superhero comics would be viewed as the American equivalent of something like the Song of Roland was to the medieval French. Um, kind of the, the Odyssey. Uh, the, he didn't write that, but I'm saying uh, a lot of those Greek myth- myths are, are so timeless and so incredible. And I can see things like the Dark phoenix saga and some of these, these comics being in that realm i mean they're they're a, an amazing time capsule and it's why uh stories that tell more evergreen kind of things and don't get caught up in, in trends that come and go it's like you know no comic wants to it, commenting on the kardashians is pointless in a comic uh, in the long view i mean a hundred years from now will anyone remember the kardashians probably not uh, so it's uh, these these big kind of epic mythical stories are, are just incredible um and, and then he goes on, and by the way, it's a whole other video in itself. The idea that Cape comics are free from evil government influence or how they've been an apolitical medium is, is until recently is not the case. It's true. And I've done some other videos on this. There, there's, And I need to do a whole set on the comics code. I've been kind of resisting it because it's such a big topic. And uh, that's that's going to be... Um, that's that's going to be a lot of videos because there's a lot of complexity and nuance in there. It's not a simple topic by any stretch of imagination. And comics have not been free of politics. Absolutely true. But um, they have been handled differently. And as I've done videos in the past, there's been a very distinct change in how politics are addressed and handled in comics. And, and that's, a, that's a big deal. Pulsar, and by the way, it's going to be several videos now as I'm realizing there's a lot of good comments. Uh, Pulsar Stargrave said, what do I like about comics? Well, number one, a quick shot of fiction. I can read a story about just about anywhere without investing too much time. I love great art and a variety of styles. Same as I am number two when it comes to writing. I, I didn't do numbers. Number four, Americans created the comic strip. People search to grow for uh, precursors and failed both the comic strip and the comic books we know it are American creations like jazz. That's an inch. Maybe debatable there, but I get where you're going with it. And I, 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 there's some amazing things in other countries, but um, but I, I'm with you. There is something Americana about comics, for sure. The medium is tailor-made for experimentation. Jim Serenko could have been content with just being another Kirby clone. Instead, he pushed a superhero medium forward by adding uh, Kringston storytelling and a dose of psychedelic backgrounds. Yeah, absolutely. Dig Sim, um, where's that burn image of the FF uniform? Oh, yeah, sorry, I should have answered that question. Um, it's it's one he did a poster promo art, is the burn image. Uh, that was in the original video. But at any rate, um, yeah, no, I, I think there's definitely uh, a lot there, and, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued by this American thing. Now I'm now I'm kind of distracted, so I'll, I'll have to get onto that later. Um, Jeff Pearl Jam, 1976. His TV is so bad right now, and movies are worse. But he finds some good comics. You just start counting the days until the next issue. Uh, AWA Upshot, Bolt, Aftershock are doing some real good things. I still love my Batman. I'm glad we're on the 90s extreme with the image. I like how DC took this shutdown and picked up the ball and ran with it. I think Marvel is too woke. Um, I, 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 I totally agree. The um, you know When you get a good comic, you cannot wait for the next issue, and it's almost this, this mythical, amazing um, uh, piece to it. And I just, I just love that feeling of anticipation. And really great TV shows can get there. I mean, a lot of people, uh, the first season of Westworld, that it caught me for whatever reason. And uh, I was just like, I couldn't wait for the next week. And it, it, but it's rare. With comics, it happens way more frequently. Um, you, can, you can really tap into that. Um, Matthew Covington uh, talks about, uh, when I read a comic, I view it as a special event. So I give it my full attention so I couldn't so good and everything. God bless you. I totally agree. I love reading uh, that have moments that justify the name of the title. For example, I'll use some of my favorite characters. I love reading moments about how amazing the Amazing Spider-Man is, how incredible the Incredible Hulk is. Um, you know, he talks about Tony Stark and uh, Miss Marvel and um, and uh, all the above, especially when I exclude to Kamala, who I think harkens back to the start of Marvel Age. Yeah, I, yeah I, this is probably another video too, but I, I agree with you. I do think Kamala Khan is such a fascinating case because a lot of the core of that character does feel like a classic Marvel hero. And I think G. Willow Wilson deserves some credit when she created that comic in her first run of making this. If, if anything, I think the problem with Kamala Khan is purely that Marvel decided to jump on there and promote it too fast, too quickly, and almost give people this, uh, you, you have to like it. It's so 
you know, you have to like it. And I, I look at things like, like I think Moon Girl achieved quite a few of the same things, honestly, for a slightly younger audience, but it didn't have that heavy promotional push. And so I think that's why I got less backlash. I think Kamala Khan actually, um, there's the, the meat of that comic is there and then they decided to toss it into a lot of uh, uh, crossovers and it just, I think it wrecked the whole, not, not wrecked it, but it just, it took it back a little bit. And um, I think uh, it, it's a shame. It's, it feels like it's anchored down with weight it, it doesn't necessarily deserve. Um, and then, um, let's see, uh, Ian uh, it corrects something in my video, which is appropriate, but that's not something you love about comics. Unless you love correcting me, and that, that's fair. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm looking at some other, there's some comments here that are good comments, but they're not about uh, what people love about comics. I'm, I'm skipping those. So, uh, Ben David writes, superheroes, the idea of somebody stumbling across a strange or unique power and using it to help others or right or wrong is a powerful and positive concept in our culture. Absolutely. The threat here is the current trend to seemingly downplay Kate books and degenerate, uh, denigrate heroism. Um, yeah, I, I think that's true. I think the idea that you stumble across something that can be used for selfish gain and instead you use it to help others. That's amazing. That's a good ideal to live up to. And that is the core of, of, heroes i think and then comics get, when they tap into that's good and they seem embarrassed to tap into that lately which is is bad um he said he goes on characters uh broader playing out of distinct personalities in and out of the pages seems like comic books comic industry filled with characters colorful egotistic emphasizing particular tendencies yeah i think there's a sometimes it's a little bit of a stereotype that you get into for certain characteristics but yeah i think you get larger than life characters absolutely uh, the style the dynamic colorful this is a great comment but all these are so good uh the dynamic colorful bold explosive tendency of comic art uh to, that yeah absolutely um talks about alec ross and and just you know if you get an artist that's pouring their love into the page you can tell i mean it's just it's it's right there um and number four imagination it's it's medium that we, we've covered this a few times already but it's like the idea that you can there are no limits. You can have fantastic ideas and uh, you construct entire universe with, with minimal effort. It's, it's purely based on limitations of your own imagination, which is incredible. And then the crazy, uh, and I like, I, I get, I, I'm with you on this. Uh, comics is crazy. Many of the stories I hear on this other channel, some of the panels I see, comics is pure crazy. Low borrow entertainment mixed with high abstract concepts. Um, ideocentric uh, ideals, uh, or sorry, idols and icon class, uh, hypersensitive, insecure creatives, and the insensitive a-hole corporate management. Yeah, sure. It is crazy. And and the, the trick is, and, and hopefully you guys have seen, I've, I've reported on a lot of the crazy. I've told a lot of crazy stories. And it... it um, it is uh, it's it's a double edged sword. On some levels, you hear things and you're like, this this has gone too far. This is wrong. Um, but on other hands, it's like, where else do you have an industry this nuts? I mean, there's there's a magic to that. I agree. It's it's an interesting balance. I'm gonna read one more and then we'll do a second video because there's just there's a lot of good comments here, um, and I, I want to make sure I'm giving them all uh, proper uh, time. So Yingu fourteen, um, he writes. Uh, or she writes, I guess, I shouldn't assume. Uh, number one, with the lower cost of production compared to other visual mediums, possibly the stories is endless. I, you, you see this as a recurring theme, and this is where the potential of comics is amazing and can't be found, certainly not dollar per panel, anywhere else. Uh, two, uncompromising creativity. Small creative team, low cost production. I mean, the reality is two people, I mean, it's okay as one person, but a team of less than five can create the equivalent of a Hollywood blockbuster, which is going to have thousands of people work on it. I mean, where else do you get something like that? Um, I, incredible. Uh, number three, amazing creators interact through fans or conventions, social media events, etc. cetera. I, I do agree. And that's probably why people got so, I think, hung up on the way that creators were interacting poorly on social media is because we had this connection. And so people expect a lot from it, uh, sometimes fairly, sometimes unfairly. But but yeah, that connection is, is big. For the passionate fan base that loves the art, uh, creation of art, cosplay, um, you know, very inclusive fan base. I often have great conversations with strangers by LCS. Every now and then, by the way, somebody comes in and says, nobody talks in the comic shop. They just come in and get their comics go. And I always think, what a depressing, crappy comic store that would be. I, the, the conversation, it's the reason I'm doing these videos. It's, it's I desperately want to talk to people. Anyway, um, five. Participation for me, listening to music, watching a movie, reading a book while entertaining and sometimes inspirational does not inspire to participate in the art form. However, with comics, when I read a great comic book, it makes me want to create a comic and draw. 
Man, awesome. I, what better way to end this first video on this topic with? Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. So um, amazing comments, amazing feedback, and uh, and hopefully something for us all to think about, uh, for me to think about anyway. I just, I'm so jazzed uh, reading this stuff. It's, it's awesome. So thank you very much. Hey, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, and you click the bell for notifications if you like that. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Comic Perch. Thank you for listening and thank you for writing. Um, this, this channel is nothing without you.